In the Rip Up Britain office, we hear dreadful stories about you being scammed and the terrible effect it can have on your confidence and self-esteem as much as your bank balance. So we'd almost given up thinking there could be anything positive that could come out of such an awful situation. Until that is, we heard about people like Sigrid Hambly. Rather than let such a horrible experience hold her back, Sigrid and others like her are now determined to turn the tables on the scammers and start fighting back. And I'm delighted to say that already they've achieved some quite remarkable success. Now, at first glance, this sleepy Yorkshire village appears to be, well, nothing out of the ordinary. Yet living amongst its leafy streets is a resident who's taken on the fight against international scammers. 79-year-old Sigrid Hambly knows firsthand just how devastating it can be to fall victim to fraudsters. After her husband died, Sigrid received a letter in the post one day from a clairvoyant, claiming they would be able to put her in touch with her late husband. And feeling particularly vulnerable at the time, she responded. He promised me that I could make contact with my departed husband. I thought, well, if I can talk to my husband, you know, you're not right in the head when something like that happens anyway. She didn't actually send off any money, but her initial reply led to the clairvoyant continuing to pester her almost daily for the next two years. What's more, she believes that in replying to the original letter, her details were then passed on to numerous other companies who also began to send her junk mail, most of which was asking her to buy things or to send off money. Put it in the bin, most of it. But um, there were one or two things I was interested in, so I sent for them. And, um, and I got more mail and more mail and more mail. One particular letter told Sigrid that following the death of her husband, she was entitled to a large financial payout, but she'd have to pay a fee in order to release the money. We had quite a good rapport at the time, and I trusted him. He said the only thing they needed was to get back the money they had spent in finding me. And that was about £1,000. Convinced that she was in for a windfall, Sigrid paid the money. But after a few months, with neither any sign of her payout or indeed further word from the person she'd paid, she realised she'd been scammed. I was really quite ashamed that I should have been so stupid. He was clever. And he knew what he was doing and he'd obviously done it before. And that made me even more angry. In total, Sigrid reckoned she paid out thousands in response to the junk mail she'd received over the last few years. And although some of the things she signed up for, she did find quite useful, she says in most cases, she paid out simply because the companies who'd get hold of her details called her up and were very persuasive in getting her to hand over her cash, even if she didn't really want to. And that kind of pressure is a very familiar story to Louise Baxter. She runs a national scams team set up by Trading Standards in Eastbourne. Its main role is to tackle postal, phone or doorstep frauds by raising awareness of the scammers' tactics. We often see that older people are targeted because they're more likely to be socially isolated. I think it's half a million people, and within the UK, over 75, only talk to somebody every five to six days. What often happens is the scammer will contact them via the mail or via the telephone and they will fill that void of that social and personal contact. And as happened with Sigrid, as soon as they get some kind of positive response, it opens the floodgates to more of the same. If a consumer responds to one of these scam letters, they get added to what's called a sucker's list. And then their details are sold on to different criminals who are then sending them more and more letters. So we've seen some people receiving up to 60 scam letters a day. Shocking. With the seemingly unstoppable tide of junk mail being sent to people across the UK, trading standard teams across the country have now come up with a new way of trying to fight back and stopping the scammers in their tracks. We have what we call an army of people and volunteers that we ask to go out into the communities and to spread the anti-scam messages, but also to collect intelligence for us on what scam mail is coming into the country. These are called scam marshals. And back in Yorkshire, one of those scam marshal volunteers is Sigrid, keen to turn her own unpleasant experience into something more positive 
She's been one of the most successful recruits of the Trading Standards branch near where she lives. I said, yeah, sure, I will. Maybe I can get a few people myself who are doing the same thing to somebody. It makes me feel better if I can. Knowing how reluctant she felt about admitting that she'd responded to scam mail, Trading Standards came up with a way of collecting people's junk mail that allows them to get rid of it without feeling uncomfortable. People don't want to admit that they are being scammed. They are embarrassed. I decided that I was going to put the boxes in various places <clears throat> because then people could put their letters in the box and, you know, they wouldn't be overseen by anybody else. Collecting up people's scam mail not only stops it sitting temptingly around people's homes, but it has a real benefit to trading standards, who use it to keep on top of the latest cons and gather evidence to go after the people behind them. We'll have a good rummage through to see what's in the envelope to start with. Um, and then we will be able to identify sort of new trends of scams that are coming in. Um, and then we will identify things that we could put out to the public via our scam alerts. And then we will have the new intelligence that we've not seen before. So now that the scam marshals have identified for us so that we can then start um, the ball rolling on a new investigation to stop that from getting into the postal system. But this is a scheme that does more than simply spread the word, vital as that may be. Louise says the work of the 275 or so scam marshals all over the UK has led to some real results. Work of the scam marshals um, resulted in a European investigation where we'd identified um, several hundred PA box addresses that were receiving scam mail returns, so money from UK victims who were sending money to fake prize draws and clairvoyant scams. This resulted in millions of pounds being seized and several people being arrested. And Louise is clear that Sigrid has played a key role in some high-profile cases. Sigrid's actions by sending us in um, relevant scam mail and up-to-date scam mail has allowed us to identify where the scam mail is coming from and share that information with the uh, local law enforcement agencies in America, Canada and Europe and actually get the people behind the scams um, arrested and prosecuted by the relevant law enforcement authorities. So Sigrid has provided us with, with information and evidence that we wouldn't have had unless Sigrid had sent it in to us. In June 2018, Sigrid's work was recognised with an award for her outstanding contribution to consumer protection. This is the Hero Award. Now that is because I don't give in. I can, if, if anything happens and I know I'm right, I put my foot down and I win in the end. Good for her. Now Sigrid spends much of her time making sure the scam-busting message gets around to as many people as possible. Right, I'm a scam washer. <laughs> and that means that we collect scams. And scams come in all sizes and it can be a letter, it can be a catalogue, it can be anything. For Sigrid, her new role has not only helped something good come out of her own nasty experiences, but it's given her a whole new purpose in life. My friends call me. A terrier. She gets her teeth <laughs> into you. That's it. You've had it. So scammers, watch out. And there's more information on the work of scam marshals on our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash ripoffbritain.